Creating a section view in Autodesk Inventor is relatively simple, but you have to be careful because there's a couple things that the program doesn't get right that you'll need to fix. Welcome back to Practical AutoCAD and Inventor, your source for practical solutions to your problems with AutoCAD and Autodesk Inventor. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe so you will be notified whenever new videos are published. Also, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, please leave a comment below. Now, on with the video! Half sections are often used with cylindrical objects so that in one view you can show what an object looks like on the outside and what it looks like on the inside. Creating a half section in Inventor is very simple, except that the program doesn't get everything just right, so there's a few changes you'll need to make when you create your half sections. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create a half section in Autodesk Inventor. Considering this object that I have here on the screen, this bearing, it's got some rounded surfaces and cylindrical surfaces and that kind of stuff. We're going to start off by creating our front or our, yeah, our front view of the cylindrical shape. I've already created the drawing here, so I'll come in and I'll say I want a base view, and I'm going to change my scale so that it's one to one full size. <clears throat> and I'm going to put it off to the side over here. It'll be underneath my window for a moment until I'm done. And then I can choose OK. So here's my base, my front view, uh, and from this view I want to create my half section. So remember, when we create a half section, we cut into the center of the object and then out the other direction and we draw one arrow showing which direction we're looking. When you want to create the section in Inventor, you're going to follow that same path. So on the Place Views tab, we'll go to the Section Tool and then we'll pick the view that we want to create the section with and then when it's time to draw that cutting plane line you want to go to the center of your cylinder and track that point off. You need to go out about 3 eighths of an inch or so. It's not super critical how far out past you go. Start your line there. Go back to the center. When you get the coincident constraint, click your mouse. And then you want to track off through the top of the object. In this case, make sure it goes through that center point as well. And again, about 3 eighths of an inch past and click again. Once you've clicked that second time, you can right click your mouse, choose continue, and then move out to the side where you want to create your side view, your, your scheduled view. Now, this view does not need to have label identifiers. Um, when you have a simple drawing with just one or with just two views, one view being the front view and the other being the section view, the view identifier is not necessary. So I'm going to simply delete that view identifier there in this case. The other thing that you could do, and we'll show in a moment, is you could go in and you could simply get rid of them all together, but I'll leave them in for now. So it's going to go like this. Notice that it automatically orients the arrow for me, and I can click where I want it to go, and then choose OK. And even though I got rid of it up there, it didn't get rid of it here. I'll show you how to eliminate that in a few minutes. <clears throat> Now, you can see here that my, my cutting plane line goes in through this circle to the center, out through this circle, up. I'm removing this portion for the sake of my section view, looking at the inside at the top and looking at the outside at the bottom. And for the most part, Inventor gets this correctly. The inside have all been, all of the edges have been revealed and changed to visible lines. All of the solid material has been sectioned as it should be. And on the other half, there are no section lines, which is correct. But the thing that they don't get right here is this line in the middle should not be a visible line. It should be a center line. So what we'll do here is we will right click on each of these and turn the visibility of those lines off. After you have them have the visibility of those lines turned off, you can put the center line back in by right clicking on this view, go down to automated center lines and indicate that you want this view to have the view, uh, the objects in view axis parallel and then choose OK. Notice it puts the center line in for that one and this one 
It does not put the center line in for that one. That's correct. It should not have one there. The other change that you'll want to make is this view needs to have a couple center lines. It needs to have the regular center lines and then it needs to have the center lines for the bolt pattern. We'll do those in two steps. To create the first center lines, you'll go to the annotate tab at the top and then you'll come over here and you'll use the center line center mark tool and you can simply pick the largest circle on the page. Now notice that when I put that center line in, it draws a center line underneath my cutting plane line over here, which technically isn't incorrect, but it's not correct either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply stretch that back so that the center line that was underneath those that cutting plane line is now not visible, and now this is correct. The only thing that we're missing now is that bolt circle showing me how big the circle should be for these bolts. You'll do that with this other tool right here. Okay, this one, the centered pattern tool. You click the tool. The first thing that it asks for is the center of the pattern. So I'll pick this circle, which has the center of the pattern. And then what I can do is I can pick the circles in order. One, two, three, Four, go back up to the top one click and then right click choose create and you'll see that it creates my centered pattern <clears throat> and now I have all of my center lines as they should be now finally to finish this out if you do not want section AA with the scale and section A here you can simply double click on the text itself and you can tell it just I don't I don't want the text so you can highlight it hit delete, choose OK, and then we can repeat it down here. So I'll highlight all my text down here, delete it, choose OK. Now finally, if you want to have a section view of, or uh, an isometric view of this section, that's very easy to create. Going back to the place views tool, you're going to say I want a projected view starting from this as my base, and I'm going to put up here somewhere, hang on. I want a projected view. This is my base and I'll come up to the right and for whatever reason it doesn't want to show it. So I'm going to click there and say OK create and I created it twice. Let me do that and get rid of one of them. So that's the correct view now and now what I'll do is I'll just simply drag this back over here and you can simply now just take your views and re you know change where they are, position them a little bit differently so that you can get everything on your screen. But now you have that section view of my, or the, the isometric view of this section, which gives everybody a really clear view of what this looks like on the inside and on the